Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to the Technical Forum of Hydrogen and Fuel Cells Europe at the Hannover Fair 2022. You have a lot of interesting presentation about the new technology, and the next presentation will be about sustainable aviation and shipping with hydrogen and fuel cells. And we got the head of energy system, head of energy system, head of energy system, and um, twice, of the German Aerospace Center here, Dr. Asif Anza. Please welcome him. Thank you, thank you. I'm Asif Ansar. Thank you very much for the introduction from the German Aerospace Center. Can I be heard clearly? Because I want to start with two promises. The first promise that I would like to make is that my slides will start soon. <laughs> Um, that we have a booth B14 in Hall 13 where you're welcome to come, as well as we have another booth at B40, also in Hall 13, on, uh, that you should come and visit us, where we are exhibiting some of our projects. And the second pro promise is that I will try through many slides to show you that hydrogen and the fuel cells will be able to reduce some of our challenges on the emissions. Right? So let me start with that. So the greenhouse gases, we have talked about it, and aviation as well as shipping collectively are contributing around 5% of the CO2 emission. And some of you will say that why this is critical, just the 5% we are talking about. Both areas are the largest growth sectors. So COVID, of course, seen the dip, but the both sectors are the largest growing area, and therefore there are um, uh, regulation that's coming in place, the IMO for the shipping, as well as uh, Green Deal, uh, Flight Path, and Corsia, which are trying to cap the CO2 emissions. But CO2 is only one side of the story. The other pollutant, the SOX, NOx, the, the black uh, carbon, um, are the second part that needs to be tackled at the same time. So. Uh, not only that they are the fastest growing area, both shipping and aviation belong to the sector which is called hard to abate. That means the reduction seems more and more difficult and electrification like we are seeing it in the land transport is not straightforward. Um, this is not just what we are saying it, there is a report from the European energy sector which is saying that, that the, every other sector of the transport the emission has been reducing except for shipping where only the NOx has been increasing. And all the elements when it comes to the aviation, except for methane and volatile organic compounds, all the emission has been increasing. So despite our effort, things need to accelerate in terms of emission cut much faster, where the hydrogen and fuel cells come in. And why is that? There is a silver lining to it. The two-thirds of the emissions come from the short-range flight. Some of my friends here from the Denmark and others sitting from the Germany might have taken a flight, a short-range flight. And we see over here, the most of the density of the flights are the short-range area. And that which corresponds to the CO2 emission, the largest emission. And that is the flights we can today tackle by bringing fuel cell and powering them with hydrogen to tackle those emissions, both the NOx and the other pollutants, as well as the carbon emissions. For the large range, the immediate term will be sustainable fuels, the SAF, the E-kerosene produced from the green hydrogen. Now, it is not just about putting in the fuel. It is also a question that the weight is the key KPI that has to be fulfilled for the aviation. We looked at a list of different type of fuels available, and today only fuel that is viable is low temperature PEM fuel cell because of the power density. We are using today a fuel cell system that goes up to one kg, um, uh, one kilowatt per kg. And the target is to go up to 2.5 to three kilowatt per kg for aviation. Based on that, with our colleagues from the aviation side, we are coming from the energy side of this story and then aviation side, uh, uh, Johnny Hartman and Bjorn Nagel, we did a full analysis, and we see that up to the 70 passengers, a fuel cell system in the range of 1.2 to 1.5 megawatt will be able to power a, a regional aircraft 
going up to 1,500 kilometers or nautical miles, which allow us to go completely down uh, in the emission impacts. But if we go to the larger distances or a higher uh, regional aircraft, which is up to 200 or 250 passengers, then already fuel cells or today's available fuel cells do not fulfill uh, the needs. There, we have to go to a hybrid system where the fuel cells and the hydrogen gas turbines are working hand in hand to uh, power such, um, uh, such an aircraft. All right, uh, for developing in the both cases, the fuel cell systems, we have developed a methodology at German Aerospace Center, a detailed one, in which the models, the system design, but the system demonstration and upscaling goes hand in hand. So we started already with a smaller system, which were in the range of 120, 150 kilowatt, and had our own flying platform. Uh, with the company, which is a spin out from the DLR, the H2 Fly, we had the Hi4, the first aircraft with the four passengers that has 30 take-ons and landings, right, on the, utilizing purely hydrogen, the gaseous hydrogen at that time, and the fuel cell system. Most of the work went into the BOP optimization and getting the permit to fly. Now, this was a clear milestone, a good milestone, but this remains still uh, first uh, proof of concept level. Uh, we had a very close follow-up of a mission profile. We are seeing it at uh, different zones, the takeoff zone, the cruising zone, as well as the landing, and the fuel cell system, which was a fuel cell with a battery system together, was able to follow up this overall flight profiles closely. In the larger system, now that we are going forward, because of the extra weight that battery is bringing in, we are skipping the battery and enable to run the fuel cell at the peak powers for that time. Um, going from the smaller systems, that was a flying platform and had a runoff. Now the next mission is to go something serious, real, commercial, which are the big aircrafts. This cannot be handled only by the 100 kilowatt. This needs a megawatt capacity. This is the upscaling is the biggest challenge. The, the upscaling is not about this, only the size. That means the air blower, that means the cooling systems has to be developed accordingly. And we cannot do it just by putting, so we have a partnership right now, we are taking 100 to 200 kilowatt PEM fuel cell system, putting them together to go to megawatt capacity, but this cannot be the future. The future needs to be a unitized large module systems, right? For doing this thing, the analysis, a detailed analysis done by the modeling, which also shows that, that the land-based power systems cannot be utilized at high altitude as the power profiles are different. So that means the whole analysis needs to be done at the mission profiles at high altitudes. And the components needs to develop based on the requirements of the fuel cells. This needs to be then validated at the lab level. So typically 20 to 100 kilowatt systems are used as a model system for a validation. One other example is a low pressure chamber, which mimic the conditions that the flights or the power system will see at the high altitudes. And then we try to mimic that how the performance of the fuel cell system and the components will look like. Similarly, some of the system that the cold storage and the cold stack system that we are developing in. And again, with the mission is that how the storage, the, the cooling, or the cold start of the fuel cell system, especially at the high altitude, will affect. One of the example is the, at, uh, at very high altitudes, the cold start, where we have devised a way in, in injecting the hydrogen as well as uh, additional oxygen in the respective electrodes. Uh, the time for a startup could be reduced by, by half. Lastly, um, I want to present that these all aspects is going towards one and one single-handed mission go towards the real aircraft, the original aircraft, as we mentioned. 70 passengers aircraft is the first milestones, 1.5 megawatt. And for that, we are currently building our test rig, which is called Bali's. Bali's is bringing the fuel cells, hydrogen, the motor that will eventually go into aircraft and do all the ground-based testing to do the qualification. Um, this is how the Bali's actually today looks like. The construction has started and we will have an, uh, a, a, a ceremony, the first installation ceremony already October this year. At the parallel, we have a project which is with the Doce aircraft, where the same system will be tested as an iron bird, and then will be integrated in one of these Doce aircraft um, a plane, three to eight plane, and will be flying up. However, these solutions need to be seen for the shipping as well. 
But the shipping the problem is somewhat different. Most of the emissions does not come from the short train ships. The most of the emissions come from the ocean liners, whether that's a freight ships or whether passenger ships. Hydrogen has today its limitation because of the very low power density. So we are suggesting a possibility to go away from the heavy fuel oil towards the first stage with the LNG. And this is already happening. That will cut down some of the emissions, especially the other pollutants, not so much the CO2 as today, but other pollutants will be cut down. And we are seeing is that this shift from the heavy fuel oil to LNG is already happening. And this is one of the Maya groups where we already have the order books already in the future going away from the heavy fuel oil towards LNG. And therefore, we are suggesting in our project Nautilus a system which is based on high temperature fuel cells coupled with the batteries and will be operated with LNG. With this system, we want to reach two key targets of IMO, the CO2 reduction by 40%, as well as other pollutants reduction. Normally, IMO is asking only 70% reduction. We are going as high as 99% reduction of other pollutants. And together with this, our aim is that we will start with a system that will go from a micro-hybridization that we have the ICE still integrated and we will micro-hybridize, then go towards a, a balanced hybridization and eventually remove completely the ICE and only run with the fuel cell, high temperature fuel cell and battery systems with LNGs. Yeah? Okay. Thank you for this very so powerful presentation. We have to come to an end. I am. It's, it really is a pity. You can maybe one two sentences, but we really have to stop. I will. I will stop immediately. Just in, give me just two. Just last two minutes. Yes. Jump. No. No. One minute. Yes. Two minutes is too late. Okay. Jump to the end and find you. Okay. A great closing. Where is your booth? Uh, B40 and B14. So the two uh, numbers where our booths can be found. Last topic only. Uh, one minute. That all these things is only possible by having the sustainable fuel. Electrical propulsion needs the fuel still, and that's what we are doing in our projects related to for aviation on the liquid hydrogen by electrolysis, as well as high temperature electrolysis we are converting into liquid power to liquid fuels. Thank you very much for that, yeah? Yeah, thank you very much for this powerful, energetic, and very interesting presentation. Dr. Asif Anza.